as you can see, obviously I am on a wheelchair, but I am a climber. Um, the, best, the best moment in climbing for me are when I've been able to reach my dreams and those walls that I thought I could never climb. And especially if shared with my best friends and mates and uh, people who know how hard I have trained for that and, uh, and uh, how I have worked hard to be there. So most of all, climbing is the best way to know myself my possibility and my limits. Climbing allows me to understand that I can't do everything, but to appreciate uh, the joy of what I'm doing and to enjoy this peaceful landscape, but it requires al also a lot of self-control and in, a, in such a severe environment. And I really miss being above the clouds. And this has been my way to experience the mountains. Mm, mountains have been a great teacher in my life. They gave me a very strong mindset about how to face everyday life and difficulties and understanding what is really meaningful and what is achievable and not to waste time and to go straight to the top. So for sure, when the accident happened three years ago, I didn't expect it, and, and I didn't expect that it could have happened to me. I mean, we all know that mountains uh, can have huge objective risk, and we all know that in such uh, places, accidents can happen, and death also can happen. So it's hard to think that it can really happen to you. Uh, I, I can't say why. Maybe it's because I was always well-trained. I studied the route, I studied the conditions. So that morning, three years ago, something just fell above us and we fell as well. Uh, we fell from the second pitch of a mixed route in Trentino and we were down, falling down in a couloir and down again. But, so the improbable happened to me. And the first thing still today that I say is that just, we have just had bad luck. And within a, a few seconds, I became a statistic. And I was in a really unlucky accident. So I stay awake during all the rescue. And then I was taken to the hospital. And it was there that I have learned about my new reality. So this paralysis from the waist down. Uh, the other thing has been, uh, still is, not so much not standing up or just not moving legs even, but much more the other disease that this spinal cord injury brings because there are like uh, a strong weakness endless tiredness, you don't feel the legs, but you have a constant nerve pain, and you have also infections. So those dysfunction are really hard to accept. And so I think for a sportive person, the physical recovery is less important than the other. And this comes out a lot more when you went back home. Because when I, on my own, along with the disability, I really began to realize that I had to restart. So I had to find new way just to move, to take a shower, to cook, uh, so easy things. And several times I found myself crying for not being able to make easy things anymore and crying for all the pain. But it's not easy to accept, and it's not really that I still have accepted, but uh, I just have found a way to live with the disability. So resilience is the word. Most of the work has to be done on myself. So even I'm surrounded by friends, but while they are great support, they are not inside my mind. So the most difficult part is to start again. And especially if you have lost everything and stuck in a wheelchair. And for when 
from where I cannot even go to have a walk on a grass, or I can't go on a cliff at the sea. So the first step was to understand what I could have achieved again, and what I would I have made. Second step was to try not to give up in front of the difficulties of the rehabilitation. And my body was used to that, and my mind as well, and I think it's thanks for the mountaineering climbing. And the first step was going back to my life. So going back to my home, going back to my work, and be back to where I could try to be my new myself. So one of the key elements in recovery was not to be in a hurry, to make things step by step, and not to try to pretend to reach huge improvement in a while. So the only thing I was sure of is that I didn't want to be shut in. So my way to recover has been to be back to outdoor sports. And so here the new challenge, the new world and the new unknown. It, it was the moment for me to put myself out there again. So I put all my strength and self-control just to address my physical and psychological difficulties born after the accident. And this kind of approach takes me to a real world. And so I became a paraclimber. And why? Can you just imagine, and I'm sure you can, <laughs> can you just imagine the relief that mountain can give? I mean, I have always looked for that while climbing. So the wilderness, the loneliness of the places, uh, the time spent with my friends, and the severity and beauty of the mountains. And those are all the best things that you can find up there and that make all those days unforgettable. So when I was new to the area, two friends of mine promised they would have bring me back to, to a wall, to a big wall, so a captain. And that when they promise something, they should keep it and they're done. So one of those guys knew <laughs> to, to climb her. Uh, and they have given out the good advices, they were in my same situation, and they have become also my example for the way they have reacted to the paralysis. And while planning, while planning my attempt to zodiac the root of El Capitan, I met amazing people uh, who i never forget, because they were ready to help, ready to share their experiences, and ready to joined the project. So one of those guys, one, one of those was a very special guy, uh, even if he's not here anymore, uh, but he really pushed me hard to go out and kind of climb again, kayaking, traveling. So he, <laughs> he made me really understand I still could have had my life back again. And so, in uh, 2016, uh, I had my first attempt, but something went wrong and we didn't, didn't, we didn't top out. So we didn't take it like a defeat, but just something on which I had to work harder and, and to try again later. So we went back last October and uh, we did it. We climbed up, yeah. So. <laughs> It's, um, it's a route on the east face of El Capitan, and we choose that because it's enough steep to um, let me climb it as a second on a fixed rope without crawling my legs against the wall. And obviously, I was not climbing in a real way. <laughs> so we have to adapt it, a handlebar with like a traction and a juma, so the normal gear for aid climbing. And Another thing that I won't forget about that travel is that um, 
is this is that uh, that approach I have last October because we didn't really plan it, but 30 people were like volunteering, just announcing that the evening before at the kick of the Yosemite facelift. And so the day after they came and they brought me to the to the base of the wall in just one hour. And the most incredible thing is they were thankful to give me to give them the chance to be part of the project. So crazy thing. <laughs> so uh, facing a tough goal like climbing El Capitan with people I trust and with all unexpected support just made, made this climb epic for me. And we did it in three days. And uh, what, but what I have appreciated more now is that the climb was like every other time. So it was not the special one. And for me, each time I climb, it's as, like a beautiful new adventure. So climbing for sure cannot be my only sport now because it's really hard to plan now. It takes, it, it, it takes really a lot of time, a lot of people. So it cannot be something that I do every weekend neither every month. So I just had to find something else that I could have done alone. So I started whitewater kayaking. <laughs> and with other expert kayakers, um, I just found the settings and solution to make me uh, do the manoeuvres and uh, descend the rivers. So, um, with, what, with kayaking, I really found, again, the possibility to go outdoor and to travel and to be independent. One of the most important things about kayaking and being outdoor again has been that outdoors forced me and helped me to face adapting to my new life. And also make me understand that if I could do while climbing or kayaking, for sure I could manage it in my normal life. So taking some precaution or planning much more, it, forced, it also forced me to explain to my mates what I have to go through. And it's that the thing that I took to my daily life without shame and without resentment in having to explain people what I have to do. Because uh, in this way, people can understand what you are going through and can help you. So I think it's really important. So I wanted to be here today just to bring my example. So I faced a complete spinal cord injury at the age of 34, and he, he has catapulted me in, a, in an instant to a new reality that I, I didn't know and I didn't expect. So I also want you to understand how much I love climbing and how much climbing and mountaineering have helped. Um, because I really think it made me strong in my mind and in my body. So I don't really want to be defined by my paralysis. I just want to live my life to go out and to do sport. I want to share my days with my friend and with my family and to explore, to live my passion as simply as possible. So I think life is not a challenge, but the challenge is to live it fully and for everybody, disabled or not disabled. So, I think you all uh, and everybody experience disability is in his life. For me, it's the physical one. But so let me say that I finally, I have understood three things that still work. So one of those is the having goals and training for outdoor sport uh, to overcome almost everything in life. And I think also that it's so much important to uh, just keep control and just face your difficulties in life. But the key of the success is for sure resilience. So, thanks. <laughs>